I had the pleasure of meeting Amos here in Englewood and hosting him for some time in my, in, uh, at our house. Um, but what I've heard from Abby uh, Yazda, they do wonderful work and that uh, Amos does this completely altruistically, doesn't take any, um, any uh, remuneration from, from the work that he does in terms of collecting on behalf of poor people in Israel. Um, and, and, you know, anything that we can do to help Israel and to support Israel is not something extraneous to us, even though there is a halacha of ani ircha kodmin, that, uh, you know, th those who are in need, who, who are local, in your, your own city, take priority over other stockers, and that should be true also in terms of educational institutions. We know that because of where the American economy is now, there's a lot of stress, stress on families and Torah institutions and educational institutions. But Yushalayim <laughs> is also considered a near ircha. Everybody, we all, if not living in Yushalayim, but we're all, in a, in a sense, citizens of Yushalayim. And that's halachically true. And therefore, stalker that's given to a near Yushalayim is considered like a near ircha because that's where our, our heart is. And I want to commend Amos for what I've heard about the wonderful work that he does, uh, taking an enormous amount of his time traveling often to try to collect money on behalf of this stucker, Karen, which he named after Bobby Levine, who was a great tzaddik. Um, and uh, the hope that he succeeds and we hope that economic conditions will improve and uh, all those who are in need, you know, won't have to come on to his resources. But the Torah testifies, so <coughs> that there'll never be a time that there'll never be people who uh, are in need. So looks like you're, uh, you're going to be, you know, you're going to be in business for a while on this. <coughs> should only be Hatzlacha I mean. in terms of the work you do. It should be done by Amuna. And uh, and uh, we here in Engel are just, uh, in terms of our community, we're very committed to to Eretz Yisrael, to the land of Israel. And uh, so while we have great needs here as well, we always have to find s some resources to help Eretz Yisrael as well. Thank Shabbat. you very much. Amos has come on a number of occasions and um, the warmth that you feel from this man and the excitement that you feel in what it is, the hitlavut, which comes from the heart, is something monumental. You can feel it when you hear him speak. You can feel it every time you meet him. And like Rabbi Ganak, we don't, I don't accept many people at face value, but rather we, we checked, we looked into what Amos is doing, and, and uh, Baruch Hashem. Baruch Hashem, he puts his heart into his work and he does wonderful things. I think what distinguishes Karen Hatzadi from many other organizations that we, that we encounter is that, and, I, and again, I, I checked on this a little bit, many of the people that Karen Hatzadi is helping are people from our own mishpacha. What I mean by that are, and as he says in the brochure, these are people who are graduates of the Hezder Yeshivot, graduates of Yeshiva University in Israel, people that we consider to be part of our larger family and our larger community, and often are not on the radar screen of other organizations. Not, not because the other organizations don't want to help, but they're not necessarily part of the community that those organizations assist. And somehow these individuals slip through the cracks and are in great need. <coughs> Yaakov Avinu, when he um, turns to HaKadosh Baruch Hu in the beginning of Parsha Vayetze, Chazal say that he is to be commended because he turns to Hashem and he says, V'nasan li... Lechem lechol veged lil bosh. He has a chance to ask for anything, one would think. And he turns to HaKadosh Baruch Hu and he says, Please, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, on my journey, simply give me clothing to wear and food to eat. 
And that's really what we're talking about. When we hear of people who need tanurim for the winter, when we hear of people who need food to put on the table, people that we would not expect would have this need, it's, it's critical that we, that we assist. It's critical that we help. And I think another thing we should realize, and that is that we're talking about people who are doing, who are doing our job because they're living in Eretz Yisrael. And until we all go there, we live vicariously in many ways through the people who have made the, the, the dedicated leap to make Aliyah under difficult circumstances and to live in Eretz Yisrael. So I echo Rabbi Ganak's words, and I echo what I'm certain will be Rabbi Reichman's words, that uh, we should do what we can to help, that this is, these are funds for our own, for our own family, for our own people, and um, anything that we can do to help Amos in the, in the holy work that he's doing should be done. I thank him for bringing Karen Hatzadik to our community. I thank him for his work and his hit lahavut. I thank him for his beautiful words. And uh, and Emir Hashem, we should be zochet to, to a time when when we will only have to see each other without the need. Amen. Thank you. I know it's, uh, it's late, I don't want to take uh, too much time from everyone, but there is a, a thought that I saw that may be uh, somewhat uh, relevant. One of the uh, great uh, tzaddikim who died, al Kiddush Hashem, during the war was Rav Yusachar Shlomo Teichtal. Rav Teichtal was a great posek the author of a set of responsa called Mishneh Sachir. And during the war, he felt that maybe, maybe Hashem is sending a message to world Jewry to move to Israel, and that maybe everyone should go back to Israel. About uh, 10 years ago, a little more, 12 years ago, they found the diaries that Rav Teichtal kept during the war and they published them. They're called Emuna Tsrufa Bekur HaShoah, a faith that was purified through the smelting pot of the Holocaust. And there Rabbi Teichtal has a thought about uh, actually this coming week's Parsha. We read in Vayetze that after Yaakov saw the great dream of the angels going up and down the ladder, so he made a promise, he said, Im yeel, madi, if Hashem will be with me, will shmarani and protect me in the path that I'm going and give me bread to eat and a place, uh, you know, clothing to wear. Then I'm going to come back and I'm going, from whatever I get, I'll give 10% to Hashem. And this stone that I've uh, now uh, smeared oil Yeyeh Beis Elokim will be made into a house of Hashem. So Rabbi Teichtal said that maybe that's not really the, what Yaakov is promising. He's not saying, if Hashem protects me, then I promise to build out of the stone a house and give 10%. What he was saying is, if Hashem protects me, I promise that v'shavti b'shalom el Beis Avi. I promise to come back to Eretz Yisrael. Because when Yaakov is going out to a dangerous place, he knows that what he needs is the merit of Eretz Yisrael. And since he's promising to come back to Eretz Yisrael, that's what will protect him. Rav Lichtenstein points out that there are really two psukim about tzedakah. There's one pasuk in the Torah that says to give tzedakah, and there's another pasuk, ki lo yechtal evyon mi kerev ha'aretz, which links the mitzvah of tzedakah to Eretz Yisrael. So there's perhaps a special nature to tzedakah given to people in Eretz Yisrael. Both, it's, as Rabbi Golden said, it's our chance to be together with those who are representing <coughs> us. But also, as Rav Teichtal taught, when we are linked to Eretz Yisrael, we have the special merit of Eretz Yisrael, which is what protects us in all the difficult uh, dangers that we might be in. <laughs>